I'm sure you've seen some Vivo Sun stuff before. They make pretty much anything you can think of for indoor growing. You know, I've got a tent, I've got fabric pots, I've got pumps, you name it. But it wasn't until just a few weeks ago when they reached out to me that I found out they're in the LED grow light game as well. So they sent me their VS1000, which is their 2x2 light, and we're going to test this thing. Let's do it. The VS1000 is their 100 watt light meant for flowering a two foot by two foot space and it's a solid little budget lamp. It looks similar to a lot of two by two lights on the market right now. There are just over 200 diodes on the waterproof surface of the lamp with 192 white LM301Hs in the ever popular 3000K, 5000K blend and 12 deep red chips. The lamp has an IP65 rating, which means it's dust tight and protected against water projected from a nozzle, which is a scenario I would hope would not be a threat in your grow. The driver is a Vivo Sun branded unit. It's got a built-in dimming knob that can be set to five different positions from full power to off. The power draw for each position from highest to lowest was 98 watts, 74 watts, 50 watts, and 26 watts. Inside the box you'll get the light assembly. ratcheting rope hangers, a power cable, and these metal hanger bars. Overall, the light feels nice and sturdy, and I like the look of it. The driver kind of looks to me like one of those old school phone handsets. Hello. Hello, we've been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. The hanger bars can utilize the ratcheting rope hangers or hang directly on a pole in your tent. So I missed something. I was delighted to find tucked away in one of those little boxes this totally ball and pair of safety glasses. And I'm fully aware of how cool these things make me look. And I like how it makes my eyes kind of bug eyed a little bit. But eye safety is definitely no joke and I've had a few times where I've been working in a tent at night and I've got the lights on even if they're dimmed not really thinking of anything because it doesn't bother you at the time but then you wake up the next morning and your eyes are all runny and watery and crusty and they just feel terrible for the whole day and you think man I should have put my safety glasses on because working with these high power LEDs it doesn't take long before damage starts to be done so having these glasses as part of the kit I think is a great idea. I tested this in my automated PPFD test chamber in a two foot by two foot reflective space and allowed a 30 minute cool down and 30 minute warm up between tests. I checked the light at hang heights of 6 inches all the way up to 36 inches at 2 inch intervals as per my standard, and all the results plus some additional metrics and insights can be found at my new website where I'm creating a PPFD database which is ppfdcharts.com. After a 30 minute warm up the light drew 98 watts at full power and the back of the heatsink measured 40.5 degrees celsius. Ambient temperature for the test was 22 degrees. The average of every single PPFD measurement taken from all 16 heights was 457 micromoles per meter squared per second, which puts this light in between the two I've tested so far in a 2x2. If you're trying to find a height that maximizes PPFD without sacrificing too much uniformity across the space, I'd say around 12 inches is a good place to start. The max reading at this height is 732 in the center, and uniformity, which is calculated by dividing the minimum reading by the maximum reading, is 51.8%, meaning that at this height the corners are a little over half as bright as the center hotspot. The higher you raise the light, the more uniformity will increase, but your highest reading and average reading are going to drop. At 12 inches, the average PPFD is 530, which isn't anything special, but it's good enough to get the job done. Of course, if you're finding your plants aren't happy with the light at 12 inches, you can always dim it or raise it. I was surprised to see that my readings were higher than the ones Vivo Sun published for this light at 12, 18, and 24 inches. Their test space was 28 inches by 28 inches rather than 24 by 24 like mine, so that would definitely affect the readings, but looking at the center measurements taken directly beneath the light, mine are still a touch higher, and this isn't usually the case, and quite often the readings published by the manufacturer are a lot bigger than what I get. My Apogee sensor is only a few months old and it's freshly calibrated so I scratch my head sometimes when I compare my results. Long story short, kudos to Vivo Sun for giving honest numbers. I'll run through all the measurement heights now so you guys can check out all the data.
All in all, it's not a bad little light. It's sturdy with good build quality and will flower your 2x2 as well as any other 100 watt light will. I would put this light pretty much smack dab in the middle of the pack for 2x2 lights currently on the market. There isn't anything particularly remarkable about it. It does use Samsung LM301H diodes, which is great. I can't really speak to the quality of the driver yet though since I haven't used the light long enough at this point to speak intelligently about it. Ultimately, I think what will sway people most to buy this light will be their prior experience with Vivo Sun gear, good, bad, or otherwise, and the price of the lamp, which is pretty competitive. If you go to the Vivo Sun website, which I'll link in the description, the light currently sells for about 130 USD, and you can use my affiliate discount code, which is LEDYR12, to get 12% knocked off this price. This code will work on any products on the Vivo Sun website, so don't forget it if you're picking up any other indoor growing gear. That's it for this one, guys. If you like this content, please don't forget to sub. Happy growing, and see you on the next video.